Hi, good evening. How to be a modern day feminist? Should we lean in, opt out, stand up, or bend over? Now, I also wanted to think about tonight what you feel about the word feminist. And actually, does feminism, when we talk about it, does it get in the way of gender equality? What did you feel when you saw the word feminist on the screen? I'm just checking that no one's running out of the door, so that's a good start. In January 2016, Justin Trudeau said that we shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. A few weeks later, I started working at the Women's Foundation, a non-profit organisation that is dedicated to empowering girls and women in Hong Kong. And I was at a party that same week, and I was very excited about my new job, and I started talking to a friend about what I'd do. But despite Trudeau's brave declaration, I was not ready to call myself a feminist. So I said to him, I'm not a feminist, but... In fact, I didn't actually use the word feminist. This is what I said. I'm not the F word, but I am a big believer that men and women should be equal. His reaction? This. Now, after a very heated discussion with him and, and actually most of the people at the party, I quickly realized that if I wanted to keep my friends, I needed to rethink my strategy to talk about gender equality. In this instance, the F word definitely did get in the way. Jump a year later, and I was writing a blog post on LinkedIn, inspired by this photo that I took in a local bookshop. It implies that only girls like things that are pink and fluffy and dream of unicorns, and only boys like Lego weapons and dream for the stars. It was a wake-up call that we are guilty of perpetuating gender bias from a very young age. In fact, a recent US study showed that as young as six years old, girls associate brilliance with boys, and as a result, are less likely to do activities that they associate with being really, really smart. Now, in an evolving world where technology will be at the core of our future jobs, this is troubling, and we need to challenge gender stereotypes like this so that our girls and women don't get left behind. We all need to be on that rocket. The title of the post, I am a full stop feminist. No ifs, no buts, no inverted commas, no hiding behind an exclamation mark to make it more acceptable. I finally realized that we needed feminism to achieve gender equality. We needed it in the past and we need it more than ever now to hold on to the freedoms that the feminists fought for in the past. Simply put, we need feminism to achieve gender equality. We need a movement. Then I was asked to give this TEDx talk on feminism. Fantastic, I thought. I've even got my title. And I had a handful of people who had called themselves full stop feminists. And I had visions of a viral online full stop feminist movement. <laughs> but then it got complicated. I started to research the history of feminism. I wanted to find out why so many people were uncomfortable with the term feminist. I mean, I knew I had been, but beyond the usual stereotypes of feminists being man-haters, bra burners, and lovers of hairy armpits, I didn't know why. I certainly didn't know that much about the different waves of feminism. I learnt about the sacrifices and the successes of the early waves. I learned that many prominent feminists today still identify with the third wave that originated in the 90s. I found out that many young women today identify with the current online fourth wave that is associated with social media platforms. And I learned that in the UK, the Women's Equality Party have just launched a fifth wave in an attempt to protect the rights that the early feminists fought and died for. I already knew that we'd been told to lean in, have a voice at the table. Cheryl Sandberg had said that in the future, there would no longer be female leaders. There would just be leaders. And I love that message. 
But then I started reading about the backlash to leaning in and how when we do have a voice, that voice is seen to be aggressive. I learned that we're now being told to opt out. And I don't mean in a Brexit sort of a way. You can speak to me afterwards about that, but don't get me started right now. I mean in a stop trying to be like a man sort of a way, or even opt out of work and start up your own business sort of a way. I learned that actually and importantly, feminine qualities are good for business. And I learned about our internal biases and how we all have unconscious bias that prevent women from achieving our full potential. To be blunt, if you have one of these, and we're HKU, so you all do, you all have unconscious bias. What does it look like? Well, a while back, I was in the kitchen with my two children, Kitty and Max, and I couldn't open a jar of olives. Now, I need to preface this because they're both here tonight and you're both very strong. But for the context of this story, Kitty is clearly older and taller than, than my son Max, and yet I automatically passed the jar to him for him to open it. My bias was telling me that because he is a boy, he is stronger. Sorry, Max, but not so. In my quest to find out how to be a modern-day feminist, I came to HKU and spoke to some students about feminism. And I learned from them about the extremely damaging stereotyping that's been going on in Hong Kong for a number of years. I don't know if you can recognize it from these words. But it's where young women and young men are categorized as Kong girls and Kong boys. Kong girls are seen to be selfish, materialistic, self-centered, and have high demands on their boyfriends, both at the bank and in the bed. Kong boys are seen to be shallow, indecisive, lazy, and weak. Now for me, it's a timely reminder that whilst feminism is needed to empower girls and women, in the process, boys and men will be empowered too. We need everyone to understand that boys and men are part of the solution and that a gender equal world is a better world for everyone. My research then took me online and I listened to hours of podcasts and watched hundreds of YouTube videos of people telling me how Feminists are malicious and bitter and how we should be happy with the rights that we already have. One YouTuber even used the 2016 fact that out of the Fortune 500 companies, only 4% of them have women as their CEOs as proof that women have the same access to the top jobs as men. Now, that figure has only moved by 1% in the last year. It's shockingly low. It's shockingly low. But the fact is that we do not have the same opportunities. This, uh, this wave of anti-feminists are telling us that we do, but we don't. It's factually wrong. If we look at the World Economic Forum's latest report on the gender gap, it indicates that we won't achieve global gender equality until 2186. I'll just repeat that, 2186. But actually what's more worrying than the 169 years we have to wait is that when we compare to last, the previous report, we're actually going backwards. Let's take a closer look. The report looks at health, education, economy, and politics. If we take a closer look at economics, we can see that the stats paint a poor picture. In Hong Kong, women continue to um, shoulder the child and elder care responsibilities. And until we change the mindset of what women's work looks like in the home, we're not, not gonna be able to change the mindsets in the workplace. In politics, Hong Kong has just elected its first ever female leader. Carrie Lam is not, however, representative of the number of women we have in politics, and we clearly need more. So, okay, 
whatever your politics is, we're not going to go there, but having women in policy making positions is important. It's important because unless we have women, unless women have a voice where it matters, men will continue to implement policies that only represent half of the population. Now, as this illustration shows, it's not going to be an easy road ahead, and Carrie Lamb clearly has a lot of work to do. But she has stated that she will be a role model for other women and encourage them to get involved in politics. This is definitely a step in the right direction. In education, we're not actually doing too badly. And we're actually giving access to boys and girls pretty equally globally. Now just look around the room today and you can see firsthand everything you've achieved so far. But getting a good education in Hong Kong does not guarantee you a senior management position, a C-suite role, or a seat at the board table. Only last month, research showed that the representation of women on Hong Kong boards has only gone up by 1.3% in the last two years. It's not enough. So all of this is very important to me, but it has taken me a long time to take an interest in feminism. So to understand why, let's go back to the beginning, my beginning. Let's go back quite a long way to when we had black and white TV. This is my mum, an astrophysicist, a human computer, a maths genius. She was also an actor, pretending to be all of those things. <laughs> but through her work and her resilience as a single mum, she showed me that you must follow your um, dreams wherever they take you. This, this is my dad. Now I grew up seeing my dad in dresses, wigs and makeup. But thanks to both of my parents, they showed me that being different was normal. For me, different was the norm. So I've always been and brought my children up to be an ally to the people around us, but never with a focus on empowering women. And that is despite having personally suffered and seen instances of gender bias and everyday sexism. Let me give you three examples. Number one, I have lost count of the number of times I've had parts of my body grabbed in public transport. Number two, I was witness to a female colleague being told that she had not been hired to think. And number three, I know for a fact that when working alongside a male colleague, same experience, same job title, same efforts of negotiating did not result in the same pay. So I know deep down I've always been aware of and affected by gender inequality. I've always been a secret feminist. I've never been able to articulate or champion it until fairly recently. I've never been able to articulate that gender equality. So that's my story, but what about you? Why should you care about gender equality? Why should you be a feminist? And how can you be a feminist, a modern day feminist, in a world where so many people think that we already have gender equality or that we simply don't deserve it? This politician came out with a very bold statement recently when he said, that women must earn less than men because we are weaker, smaller, and less intelligent. At the beginning, I asked a question. Should we lean in, opt out, stand up, or bend over? Well, with ideas like this, we should definitely not bend over. Leaning in can work, but lean in as a woman. Be your authentic self, even better, Lean in together. Be that woman who supports other women. Opting out can also work, especially in Hong Kong, where we rank second in the world for the number of female entrepreneurs we have. And if you're a student thinking about your future career, know that being your own boss is an option. 
But as a starting point, I urge you all to stand up. Stand up and tell your story. Listen and learn to those around you. Listen to those who have suffered depression and those who reject feminism and let their ideas and experience inform your own. Now, I can't speak for women of color, women with disabilities, transgender women. They will all experience challenges that I never will. So stand up and tell your story, not someone else's. But be an ally and give others um, get others to uh, give others a voice to tell their story too. So, what is the utopia? The future of feminism. What is the finish line? To reach the end goal, we must understand the past. Without feminism, women would not have the right to vote. Access to education. Many of you would not be sitting here today. But I have hope. I have hope that the more people who stand up and support gender equality, the quicker we can reach that finish line. In January of this year, nearly five million people stood up and marched for women's rights. At HKU, you're heavily invested in the UN initiative, He for She. And so far, over 1.3 billion people have pledged their support. Hey, even Barbie has recently gone through a more inclusive makeover, so we're clearly going in the right direction. Let's celebrate all of our successes and encourage more people to join what I hope is the last wave of feminism we will ever need. Now, I'm not an expert on feminism, but I am a woman, I am an ally, I am a full stop feminist. And you? Are you the F word? Thank you.